This patient is an 11 year old soccer player with bilateral osteochondritis discans lesions involving the lateral femoral condyles. The MRI confirmed the presence of the OCD lesions in the sclerotic rim, but it showed no obvious breach of the overlying articular cartilage. The patient has placed supine on the radiolucent OR table with a bean bag and thigh post holding the leg in approximately 45 degrees of flexion. The fluoroscopy monitor is placed at the foot of the table to facilitate viewing of it. The following instruments are used, uh, and it's really a minimal instrumentation setup. The lateral femoral condyle is marked as well as the arthroscopic portals. We then perform a standard diagnostic arthroscopy using anterior lateral as well as anterior medial portals. When present, and if it's going to obscure our view, we do take down the ligamentum mucosum and potentially perform a limited fat pad resection to improve the visualization of the condyles. We then bring an arthroscopic probe into the joint and carefully assess the articular cartilage. While we run the articular cartilage, we make sure that there are no unstable cartilage flaps, delaminations, or obvious instability of the OCD lesion. After this has been confirmed, the fluid is expressed, the arthroscopic instruments are pulled from the joint, and we proceed with the extra articular all epiphyseal drilling. We mark out the physis as well as the lesion, and we advance our first 0.062 inch K wire to the center of the lesion. When we like the location of our first pin, we cut it, uh, and we can use this as a guide for the subsequent drillings. There's two ways to perform the subsequent drillings. Depicted here is a offset guide technique. There's a five millimeter offset guide, which enables you to drill parallel uh, to the first pin towards the lesion. Here we are with the K wire advanced to the sclerotic rim. We then advance the K wire through the sclerotic rim and into the subchondral bone. We then use the offset guide to circumferentially drill around the first wire. Here we are coming in with our next drill. Once again the K wire is advanced down to the lesion and we confirm it both on the AP and lateral views. This is the alternative or second technique that can be used which is just a freehand technique. Once again, you use the guide uh, or use the guide wire to show you where you need to drill. Then multiple perforations are made uh, to the level of the subchondral bone. Once again, now he's confirming on two views that you're not penetrating through the articular surface. Approximately eight to twelve uh, perforations are made depending on the size of the lesion. Uh, you know the surgery is done when you no longer feel the resistance of the sclerotic rim. At that point, the wires are pulled from the knee and the arthroscope is placed back into the joint. With the camera in the knee, we confirm that there is no significant violation of the articular surface. We also make sure that there are no unstable flaps or loose bodies. When we are happy with the appearance of the cartilage, we then remove the arthroscopic instruments from the joints and the procedure is concluded. Postoperatively, the patients are kept non-weight bearing for six weeks and they're allowed full range of motion. We repeat the x-rays at three months. If there is progressive healing with no pain, we advance the patient's activities as tolerated. Patients are followed until there's complete resolution of their OCD lesion on radiographs, but if there's no interval healing at six months, we repeat the MRI, and if it is present, we potentially consider re-drilling. Thank you.